Welcome to the IDF podcast on dermoscopy. In the following short presentation, we'll try to summarize the most useful dermoscopic clues for diagnosis of pink tumors. Let's start with the definition. The pink lesions represent a large heterogeneous group of cutaneous lesions including infections, inflammatory disease and tumors. Here we will focus on blasters. The list of pink, benign and malignant tumors could be endless. Therefore, we propose a simple table of the most commonly found in our daily clinical practice that you can see on your screen. As matter of fact, pigmented seborrheic keratosis are more frequent than non-pigmenting ones and usually easily recognizable due to well-known dermoscopic criteria such as milia-like cysts, comedo-like openings, fingerprint-like structures and so on. An example of a non-pigmented variant could be the irritated sub K, whose diagnosis could be very challenging. Nevertheless, some tips could help, such as remnant criteria of a classical sub K, hairpin vessels and signs of trauma, like hemorrhagic dots and crusts. Anyway, if you have no confidence on benignity of a lesion like this, cut it out. Among pink tumors, clear cell acanthoma is one of the most characteristic because it shows very typical dermoscopic features like dotted vessels with the pearl necklace appearance, scaly surface and colorect. Cutaneous angioma is usually easy to diagnose. Dermoscopy typically shows multiple vascular lacune, even if glomerular vessels or linear and wavy vessels can be found. Regarding pyogenic granuloma, most lesions present the same dermoscopic feature of angioma, even known like red homogeneous areas. White ray lines, white colored and ulceration can be sometimes detected. Even though we have high confidence with dermoscopic diagnosis of pyogenic granuloma, histology is strongly recommended because of its similarity with some benign and malignant tumors. For instance, here we have a pyogenic granuloma on the left and a melanoma on the right. Another example could be the dermoscopic analogy between pyogenic granuloma and hypopigmented spitz nevus, or even between a typical spitz tumor and pyogenic granuloma. It's not so uncommon to find in our patients nevi without pigmentation. Among them, dermal nevus is the most frequent and it shows at dermoscopy some features like comma or linear vessels, terminal hairs and sometimes residual brown globules or milia-like cysts. Fair skin people could present red Clark nevi whose dermoscopy is characterized by dotted or comma vessels in a pinkish tan background. The hypopigmented phase of Spitz nevus is well known also at dermoscopy and usually shows dotted vessels and reticular depigmentation. While no action is required for dermal nevus, follow-up or excision in particular cases is recommended in Red Clark or Spitz nevi. Another benign pink lesion is dermatofibroma, recognizable at dermoscopy thanks to the central white patch often dotted with point vessels and surrounded by a delicate pseudo-network. 
Here is a complete list of benign adnexal cutaneous tumors and in following slide I am going to give you some useful tips to identify few of them. Beyond the specific dermoscopic aspect of each sebaceous hyperplastic or tumoral lesion, one of the most common characteristics is the presence of yellow color, visible as yellow lobules in round follicles in sebaceous hyperplasia, as homogeneous yellowish areas around the comedo-like opening for sebaceous cysts, has multiple pale yellow globules in sebaceous adenoma and finally has yellow dots for sebaceous nevus. Another pink adnexal benign tumor often seen during our daily practice is hydrocystoma, whose most frequent thermoscopy fist is that of a translucent skin colored yellow or bluish lesion. The cylindroma is a slowly growing benign adnexal tumor occurring most commonly on the head, neck and scalp. Its dermoscopic pattern is rather repetitive and includes arborizing vessels, white lines and globules on a salmon pink background. Regarding pilomatricoma, the most frequently found dermoscopic features are yellow whitish structures and no specific vascular pattern and less commonly structureless blue-gray areas and ulceration. As we know, trichoblastoma represents the good brother of basal cell carcinoma, often exhibiting arborizing vessels and blue avoiding nests. Acrine puroma is a great imitator, as it mimics many benign and malignant lesions. For instance, in the first picture, it's similar to an angioma. In the second, it looks like a dermatofibroma, and in the last one, it resembles a viral wart. Trichopitalioma is quite rare, and sometimes it's seen in this context of syndromes such as Brooks Pigler. At thermoscopy, white color is relevant and could appear as shiny white areas or background and mineralized cysts. Arborizing vessels can be also found. Now, let's go on with cutaneous malignancies. Basal cell carcinoma is dermoscopically easy to diagnose especially when it shows pigmented structures, blue or brown. Some of them are pathognomonic, like the maple leaf like structures. The diagnosis of BCC could be more difficult if it's completely hyperpigmented and show only white and red structures. Here you find features of a hyperpigmented superficial basal cell carcinoma erosions, fine teleangiectasia, and shiny white strands. Instead, for nodular BCC, the prevalent detectable criteria are in focus arborizing vessels and ulcerations. Cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common form of skin cancer. For its thermoscopic diagnosis, as well as other keratinocytic tumor, the white color has a crucial role and appears as white follicles, white scales, white crusts, white halo, and white structureless areas. Keratocantoma is considered a variant of squamous cell carcinoma for its histopathological analogy with well-differentiated invasive SCC. At the dermoscopy, the central keratotic plug surrounded by polymorphic or hairpin vessels is its most common fist. 
The amount of white color at dermoscopy for the SCC is thought to be predictive of tumor rate differentiation. The more it's white, the more it is differentiated. Conversely, the red color due to ulcerations, hemorrhagic crusts and polymorphic vessels is predominant in poorly differentiated SCC. A melanotic melanoma is the worst nightmare for all dermoscopists. It should be always kept in mind when facing a pink lesion. For thin melanotic melanoma, useful dermoscopic clues are dotted vessels without halo and white shine lines on a milky red background. On the other hand, polymorphic vessels and ulcerations are detectable in thick nodular melanoma. Kaposi sarcoma is a malignant vascular tumor often occurring on the extremities of elderly. Its recognition could be facilitated by dermoscopy, revealing a bluish-reddish coloration, the rainbow-like appearance, scales and colorette. Merkel cell carcinoma is a rare neuroendocrine malignancy of skin with high rate of recurrence, metastasis and mortality. It often affects head and neck region, while its dermoscopy overlaps that of a melanotic melanoma. The most frequent dermoscopy features are polymorphic vessels and crusts or ulcerations. Malignant adnexal tumors, as well as the benign ones, are very numerous. Here is a rather complete list. Regarding the dermoscopic aspect of these skin tumors, it's actually indistinguishable from that of a poorly differentiated SCC and a melanotic melanoma. For example, look at the dermoscopy of this porocarcinoma and sebaceous carcinoma resembles non-differentiated SCC. Another example could be how this hypocrine carcinoma or this triclemmal carcinoma are dermoscopically similar to a melanotic melanoma. In the spectrum of pink lesions, also the primary cutaneous B-cell lymphoma could be included. The dermoscopy of this ray tumor is now well known and exhibits the following characteristics. Salmon colored background, arborizing vessels, white circles and scales. Although the dermoscopy remains an extraordinary tool for diagnosis of pink lesions, unluckily its diagnostic accuracy is lower than that for pigmented ones, which often have more specific dermoscopic details. In order to facilitate the recognition of a malignant pink tumor, we selected and tested some crucial dermoscopic clues. According to our simple approach, if one of the following findings is prevalent at the dermoscopy of a pink lesion, the excision should be advised. The prevalent criteria for suspicious pink lesions emerged from our study were arborizing vessels, in focus vessels, erosions, ulceration, glomerular coiled vessels, irregular white areas, white follicles, dotted vessels, polymorphic vessels, negative network, white lines, milky red colors, regression and rainbow pattern. In conclusion, given the high specificity and practicality of this method compared to other algorithms, we propose it to dermoscopists. And that's all.
Thanks for your attention.